Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, Golgi to ER, or retrograde transport of proteins. So we've discussed how uh, we have um, two types of protein, potentially, that we want to move back from the Golgi to the ER, luminal proteins and membrane proteins. Both of these are taken up into COP1-coated vesicles, which are then transported along microtubules uh, from the Golgi membrane to the ER membrane. Whilst uh, they're in the transportation process, what's going to happen is they're going to uncoat, or at least partially uncoat, and take off their uh, COP1 protein that's covering them, so that the vesicle is now in a position uh, to fuse with the ER membrane, because you need certain proteins to be visible on the uh, ER membrane, oh, sorry, on the, goal, on the vesicle membrane, in order for them to interact with the proteins on the ER membrane. Okay, so we're now going to discuss this fusion process. Right, and it involves snare proteins, so let's have a look. Right, so let's begin with the vesicle here. So here comes our vesicle, which contains either our luminal protein or our membrane protein that has come from the Golgi, basically. And what we want to do is we want to fuse it with the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum here. Now, basically, what you have in the membrane of uh, the vesicle is a V-snare, which is going to interact with snare proteins on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum called T-snares. So on the ER, there are going to be T-snares, which stand for target snare proteins, uh, which are going to interact with um, which are going to interact with the V-snares on the vesicular membrane. So these stands for vesicular um, snares. Okay, and the interaction of these snares is going to be what's going to pull uh, this vesicle towards the ER membrane so close that they're going to fuse. So basically, in the uh, vesicle membrane, you have one type of V snare. Well, uh, you have what? Well, okay. So, what's going to happen? is that proteins in the vesicle membrane are going to fuse with proteins, well, that are going to bind with proteins from the ER membrane. And these are going to form what's known as a core snare complex. So let me show you one of these core snare complexes. So to each core snare complex, the ER membrane is going to uh, contribute three of the alpha helices. So each of these core snare complexes consists of these four alpha helices, which are all going to wrap around each other, and that's what's going to pull this vesicle membrane towards the ER membrane, okay? And again, over here, you're going to have the same thing being formed. So you're going to form these core snare complexes, which are made up of these four alpha helices, which are going to wrap around each other, pulling this vesicle towards the ER membrane so close that what's going to happen is the membranes are going to fuse, and then that's going to allow the vesicle's contents to go into the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, as I say, these proteins that are on the ER membrane, those are called T-snares, for target snares. And the protein that's in the vesicle membrane is known as a V-snare, for uh, vesicular snare. Okay, right. Now, uh, in each one of these snare core complexes here, so this is a snare core complex, the vesicle contributes a single alpha helix, so a single snare protein from the vesicle is going to go into each one of these snare core complexes. In contrast, uh, the, um, the membrane of the um, endoplasmic reticulum is going to contribute three of the, um, three of the um, alpha helices which are going to make up this snare core complex. Now, uh, that is in contrast to what happens in the case of the COP2 vesicles, which if you've watched my videos on the anterograde transport, the uh, vesicle, the COP2 coated vesicle, is going to ha contribute three of the alpha helices, and the target membrane, which is in that case the Golgi membrane, is going to contribute only one of the alpha helices. So remember, this is the ER membrane now, because we're talking about retrograde transport. So it's more like synapses now. When you have synaptic um, fusion of the synaptic vesicles with the plasma membrane, indeed, three of the alpha helices are contributed by the plasma membrane, i.e. you have three alpha helices contributed by T-snares, and one of the alpha helices is contributed by the uh, V-snare. Okay, so let's talk about what the names of these V-snares are. Now, um, 
there are lots of different proteins that you can actually use as your V-snare for COP1-coated uh, vesicles. So I'm going to give you the names, uh, and I want you to understand that only one of them will actually be used here, but you can use all three of them. Uh, so for instance, this one could be a different protein to this one. So there are many different proteins that can function as this V-snare in COP1 vesicles. So one of them is SF. T1P, okay. Another one is GAUS1P, okay. So GAUS1P or SFT1P, and finally there's then VTI1P. So these are all proteins that can be used as the vesicular snare that's going to contribute this alpha helix into the snare core complex, basically. Okay, now let's look at the names of the T snares, and these are set basically. So let's say this green one, we'll start off with this green one here. Okay, right, so this green one can represent syntaxin 18. So one of the T snares, which is on the membrane of the ER, which is involved in the formation of these snare core complexes, is going to be syntaxin 18, and this stands for, well, this can often be abbreviated to STX18. Okay, so syntaxin 18 is going to contribute a single alpha helix, and it's on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, next one along, which I'll get a different colour for. Okay, so this next one along is SEC20. Okay, so in orange um, is going to be the snare protein SEC20. So this is going to be, this is going to represent SEC20. Okay, and then finally, in blue here, we'll have the protein USE1, U-S-E-1. Okay, so this final protein is USE1. So these are the snare proteins that are involved in the fusion of these COP1 vesicles to uh, the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. So let me go through the process again. So this vesicle is going to approach, basically, the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. It has exposed on its surface V-snares, and the three V-snares that it can have are SFT1P, GAUS1P, and VTI1P. Okay, now what's going to happen is you're going to start forming snare core complexes with these other snares that are in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, which are namely syntaxin 18, SEC20, and USE1. Okay, now to form a core snare complex, you need one V snare from the membrane of the uh, vesicle, and you need one of each of these three types of T snares in the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. These are going to all wrap around each other and they're going to tighten up and they're going to form like a a spiral there, and the same is going to happen over here, so you're going to form multiple uh, snare core complexes, and that's going to pull this vesicle membrane towards the target membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, now they're going to get so close that what's going to happen is eventually you're going to fuse those two membranes, and that's how the vesicle is going to fuse with the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Okay, now I just want to give you some more terminology with regarding snare complexes. So when you have a snare complex like this, one of these core snare complexes, that is between two opposing membranes which have not yet fused, that's what is known as a trans snare complex. So initially what's going to happen is you're going to form these trans snare complexes, they're going to get tighter and tighter, pulling the membranes together, and then eventually what's going to happen is those membranes are going to fuse. Okay, so here's the vesicle now fused together, and what happens is the snare complexes don't suddenly break apart. If you think about what's happened now, here are these snare complexes still set up. Okay, so let me color code them. So here's our V snare, so either SFT1P, oops, SFT1P, or uh, GAUS1P, or VTI1P. Uh, here's our syntaxin 18 in green here. Okay, here's our um, our um, SEC20 protein in orange, and finally our USE1 protein in blue here on the end. Okay, and they've still, they're still all complex together, they'll all still be wound together. I haven't actually drawn this uh, because it, it's difficult on the eye if I draw it, it's difficult to see what's going on. So instead I've drawn them all parallel, but in actual fact what they're going to be is they're all going to be wrapped around each other basically to, in a very tight complex. And now that they're all in the same confluent membrane, this is known as a cis 
uh, snare core complex. So this is a cis snare core complex. Okay, and um, what happens now is that when they fuse, the luminal proteins are going to go into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, and the membrane proteins, let's say here, well that's now in the membrane of the ER effectively. Okay, so that's how uh, you move proteins from the cis-Golgi back to the endoplasmic reticulum, the so-called retrograde pathway.